time like the present. Hi everybody, welcome to Slow Jam Fizz. Um, I am so excited about today's jam with Judy and Jeff, old friends from way back, but they can play in a slow groove like you've never heard, but you're about to hear. And uh, for the guitar players out there, it'll be a little different because Jeff's going to play you part of the time and he'll talk about that. And we'll, uh, I'll come back in later on, but can't take it away, Judy and Jeff. Thank you. Thanks Hello, a lot. everybody. Yep. Honored to be here, truly. Love playing slowly or moderate tempo. We don't even think of this as slow. This is moderate. It's nice. <laughs> no problems. And happy Friday to everybody. End of Friday, beginning of the weekend. Welcome to our home, or at least one wall in our home. You know how the Zoom thing works. Everything else is a mess, and then you do the space that can be seen on screen. And that's not a mess? <laughs> well, yeah, maybe in relation to everything else, maybe not. All right, shall we play some tunes? Why not? All right, I thought we would start in the key of D and stay in the key of D for a bit, um, but I'm starting in standard in the key of D and we'll stay there for um, a few tunes and then we'll sort of work our way up toward A. Um, so this first tune is a tune called Cutting at the Pint. I've always called it Cutting at the Pint. Many people call it Cutting at the Point. I discovered today that some people call it knock around the kitchen till the cook comes in. I bet that's news even to you, Jeff, right? Even to me. Yeah. Even to you. <laughs> and uh, it's a Kentucky tune. Charlie Wilson is, our, is people's source, but I just learned it at a festival somewhere. And our, our approach is going to be that Judy will run through the tune once fairly moderately so people can at least hear the melody before we all get going. And I'll try to map out the chords because I'm playing uke and I really sort of need to face Judy so we can play and have fun here and play in time together. So I will call out chords initially. So for people who are playing chords, you know, guitar, bass and all that, um, you have some shape to things and then we'll just let things go pretty quickly and we'll all just play. All right. Um, Cutting at the pint, just a little bit of fiddle. chords in this tune, D and G. And one of the cool things about the tune is that the B part starts on a G. Tune is in D, and so we're going to start on a D. You'll hear where the changes are, I think, but um, I'll, I'll call them out a little bit as we play at the beginning, and then we're all on our own. All right, cutting on the pint. Yeah.
Okay, so thank you. Um, let's make sure everybody's happy all along the way. So you can put things in the chat if you if you think it's too fast or too slow. You know, we'll just find a find the spot that's good for everybody. Was that basically thumbs up or thumbs down? Was that a decent tempo? Good. See a few good. thumbs up. Maxine's happy. Okay, and in terms of Sheila's happy chords. I see, a, let's see, a guitar. I'm not seeing a whole view of everybody, but um, is, is that good enough for the chords and stuff? Great, cool. Okay, this next tune is a Molly Put the Kettle On. There are a lot of different Molly Put the Kettles On out there and Polly Put the Kettles On. And I just learned this thing. I think the source is probably Bob Holt from Missouri, I learned recently. However, my source is Nicosi Fields, and if you uh, have a chance, you might want to go out onto SoundCloud and look up Source Error and maybe follow him because he's putting up some fantastic recordings of himself and the band, and he's recording it on a little like toy tape recorder, and it sounds so cool. So check it out. Molly, put the kettle on. Yeah, you want to run through it? Yeah. Yeah. Here it is, slowly. tune um, basically if you learn one cycle of chords and just play that over and over and over in both parts you've got it down so it's a D I'm not gonna name how many how many bars and stuff but starts with a D the next chord change goes to an A comes back to the D then it's gonna be D to G to A to D and I think the changes are pretty square to the ear, pretty easy to hear. And you just keep doing that cycle over and over again. D to A to D to G to A to D. Okay, Molly put the kettle on. Got it. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to tighten my bow a little more. That'll be a good thing.
Alrighty then. Uh, let me do, I'm just check some stuff people are writing. That's great. Yeah, Minnie put the kettle on. I like that. Ooh. Dick Hutchinson. Cool. Uh, I had somebody say that the last time we played that, that it could be the Minnie. But, but Bob Holt, oh, no, Bob Holt, I think, didn't have a title and somebody put the molly on there i think i think it uh i don't really site, have the folklore together the, here slippery but. hill slippery hill has a a version of it that sounds just like what we're playing but who knows don't need you'll to know probably know better than i so i have one more here that the fiddlers will play in standard tuning that's in the key of d oh yeah now we're going to yeah yeah good yeah cool. and it's um it's a version of Ship in the Clouds from Norman Edmonds, one of my favorite fiddlers of all time. Uh, Norman was from Hillsville, Virginia, and uh, played in a really um, simple and, and uh, very local style that I really adore. And so, Jeff's gonna play it on the guitar. And it goes like this. It's a very, it's a crooked tune. So I hope you enjoy the crooked nature of it. And I should say something before we even play it, that on, in terms of chords, and I won't explain them right now, but in terms of the chords, there are places where some people might change chords. You're home, you're home alone, or you're with people who love you and don't care. Um, you can play any chords you want. But Norman Edmonds' band in general was pretty simple uh, harmonically, and that's one of the things we love about what they did. And so there are places where they play through some spots that, you know, your ear may initially go, there should be a change there. Um, but that's just how they did it, and we like it. We're not mimicking, we just like how that sounded. So I'll, I'll get you clued into that once we get it going. But. It goes like this. For me to play this one that way somehow like that you're gonna tell them the chords uh yeah in d <laughs> a lot of d at the beginning and then when you go to the g just think hold it longer than you expect to hold it that's all i've got for you there i'll call it out when we get to that spot you just keep holding that and then at the very end of the phrase it just goes d a d in a, in a quick turnaround and again it's one of those tunes where it's a fairly simple pattern and as in fiddle music, we play it over and over again. <laughs> Ship in the clouds. <laughs>
Skip in the clouds, Norman Edmonds. Kind of a kinky thing, huh? I see, a, I see one a, person liking that one. Kind of a calliope thing, something about that. Yeah, it's like I contemporary like it. calliope. And if you didn't know Norman Edmonds, some of you probably do, a bunch of you probably do, but if you didn't, he's worth looking for. Lots of sources you'll find. We, it's very simple, but got a, got a rustic charm that never quits. So fiddle players, I'm gonna change to high basses. I'm moving my G string up to an A. Then I'm gonna check the whole thing because it probably all went out. And we're on our way up to A, but on the way, we wanted to play another Norman Edmonds tune. This one is very regular as opposed to the last one and doesn't have a ton of notes. And I thought it would be a fun thing to do. It's his version of Cotton Eye Joe, which has nothing to do with anything except for his version of Cotton Eye Joe. <laughs> So just checking in one more time, is that tempo working for people, I hope, and good? Okay, great. Of course, if they put their thumbs up, they might mean they want it faster, you never know. <laughs> Are there any banjo uke players out there? I can't see all the screen because we're we're in a different yeah, screen Yeah, so how view. would you know? Cause so you're... if you just typed in, I play banjo uke. It would make would him cool. feel better, I think. Yeah, I feel less alone here in upstate New York. Okay, Norman Edmonds, Cotton Eye Joe, a note at a time. Okay. Oh yeah, we start on the A. Don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a D tune. Starts on the A chord. Thank you. the whole thing. One part's in A, the other part's in D. Here Have we go. fun. <laughs> One of my faves.
love that tune. Hey, I hope yeah, you like that tune. Too. I adore that tune. So now, before we get into any talking, I think we're going to spend the rest of this evening in the key of A. So um, you'll want to tune now your D string up to an A, so you'll be in A, E, A, E cross tuning. I'm going to cheat. I have two violins. Highly yeah. recommended. <laughs> While, while you're getting hooked up with that one, I'll just say thanks to everybody who's here. Really love doing this. Um, and normally I wouldn't make a pitch for tips, but I think in this case, because we're giving them all to a great organization here in our hometown of Ithaca, New York, um, I, I would like to encourage you to tip in order to support the Community Foundation, which is a really great organization that uh, works, it works with endowed funds and uh, contributions from the community to provide in a lot of areas. And for the last year and a half, they've had a special fund called the COVID Relief Fund. And we're going to be giving to that whatever comes in for us. So thanks for that. Community Foundation of Tompkins County. Yes. Yep. Really great what they do. Wonderful people. Yeah. Okay. So. Let's start out our journey into A with Cookhouse Joe, which is um, from, it's like another Kentucky tune, a lot of Kentucky tunes here from the playing of Estelle Bingham, but I learned it from David Bragger because I'm, I'm kind of a meta fiddle player. I, I often go to people of my generation and younger to learn the tunes and then I go back to the old guy to figure out how they were doing it but by then I've messed it up so this is cook ass Joe here it is slowly a little bit crooked straightforward. The A part is A to E and back to A. And then you noticed maybe that there's a little kind of a loop around a, a phrase at the end, a, sort of a repeat of a phrase from the A part at the end of the A part. That's all the A and E stuff again. And then the B part is really just A with a little bit of E turnaround at the end of the phrases. So once you get the hang of that, that extra loopy thing in the middle, you're pretty much there. Chords are simple. I'll call them out eventually, but let's just play a little bit. Okay.
that's the perfect tempo for that tune. I love that. That's great. I'm glad you had fun. I hope you all had fun. Good pocket. That's really cool. Okay. So next, and we'll just stay in A now, like forever. Um, next, we were thinking about playing um, Pretty Little Widow, a version that I learned partly from Nikosi Fields again, because there's a great uh, uh, video of him playing it at Augusta that you can find on YouTube, and partly, mostly through uh, John Ashby, who calls it a Clayton McMeachin tune, and I just love that whole transition of generation to generation and how much he changed it from the Clayton McMeachin version. And Crossing that. regions big time for that, yeah, for that yeah, era. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he from was probably listening to... Georgia to Virginia. He was probably listening to LPs, don't you think? Maybe, well, sure. Or I even mean, 78s. It doesn't John mean Ashby. he learned sure. it down there. Sure, sure, right. sure. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, anyway, um, it goes like this. I know, most people don't think the uke needs to be tuned ever, but, but it does. It's terrible. <laughs> it's even worse yeah. when it's not tuned. <laughs>
happy tune there. That is a happy tune. Can you still hear us? We had a little yeah. error message No, no, there. no, that's okay. something else. I know what that is. Okay, good. No, no problem. Okay, I don't <laughs> like those error messages. It had nothing to do with it. Okay. Yeah, we're good. It's my laptop. Why don't you grab Not your uh, guitar? Yeah, good idea. Another A tune. A is my favorite key, but I have to admit that I really like calico tuning. And we're not going to do any of those today because I didn't want to run you through any more tuning than I already have. But um, this next one is a, it, we call it far in the mountain. There's much debate over whether that's really fire in the mountain with an accent that brings it out as far in the mountain. I don't really care if we call it Far in the Mountain. It's distinguished from Fire in the Mountain. It's a different tune. And this is from the Red-Headed Fiddlers, who were actually a Texas group. Where they say fire, far. Far. Yeah, right. right. So, right. so there you have it. Good? Mm -hmm. OK. The melody. thing to do for chords is I'll just yell them out as we go along. Um, well, also, I mean, you're playing a guitar and now they can see them. Yeah, if maybe you see the hands change a little bit. Yell but, but the whole time or anything. Timing's just a little bit different between the two parts, but the patterns are very similar. But they can see it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
so much for doing this and thank you for having us Maxine and, and yeah. next week on Slow Jam Fizz we've got some local Bay Area people Harry and Cindy Leedstrand who are great players have great repertoire yeah. it's gonna be super fun and I hope to see you all but you guys don't have to stop just keep playing as long as you want and um, thanks everybody for coming thank you for having us yeah. thanks everybody for coming this is such coming. a great idea and it's getting a great to hear idea. people and play with people from all over the place. It's just, it's incredible. Yep. 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 So I did have uh, one small announcement, and that is that um, next weekend, uh, Ashokan Fiddle and Dance Camp is doing the Old Time Rollick, which is a three-day online event. And uh, it's got some kind of tiered payment so that it's very, very affordable. And I can't tell you everybody who's going to be there in addition to us, but in the uh, fiddle banjo-y world, I'm very excited. Riley Boggess will be there on banjo, and Emily Shad's going to teach fiddle. Really and like. there's going to be a concert by Earl White and Band, and With, uh, uh, Victor Furtado, Victor Furtado is going to be playing band. in that band. And there's just going to be a lot of good stuff going. And one thing Deb they Clifford. do... And Deb Clifford Becca Wintel, and Becca Wintle who are running it. And, and one of the cool things they do now that Deb, Deb and Becca live in England is they're going to do a tea that'll be hosted by real life British people who really know how to do tea. And if you sign up in the next two hours, they will ship you scones and heavy, <laughs> and heavy cream, I hear. So get right on it. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. So I think we'll do one more. Is that good? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I can um, live with that. Okay, you can live with that. Everybody can live with that. We'll do a tune that we call Long Tailed Duck. And it's from the, uh, the playing of Alva Green, who I don't have a lot of recording of Alva Green. I mean, he didn't do a lot of recording. But this is one of the cool things he did. And he doesn't call it long-tailed duck. That's a renaming because the original title, uh, it falls in the offensive category. So if you just look up Alva Green, you'll be able to figure it out even though you don't know the real name. Chords, really simple. One of my favorite kinds of tunes. It just rolls along. Pretty much all A, a little bit of turnaround. Nothing fancy. It's all about the groove. Here's how it goes.
If you know one phrase, you know them all. A, E, A. Okay, have fun with this one. <laughs>
Thank you. Everybody. Hope you have a great weekend. Yeah. See you all next week. And thanks, Jeff and Judy, so much. This Thank you so much. Perfect. You Thank you, Brendan Hope. and Max. So Thank thanks you guys so much for, for putting this, this on. It's yeah. such a great idea. And I look forward to seeing you all in person somewhere, yeah. somewhere, sometime. <laughs> and hey, hey, Max and, and Brendan, can you save the chat? I would just love to see more.